Hang on. Just listening to a little Escala. Requiem for a Tower. Not sure where that's from, but it's pretty good. Uh, second video on Chapter th 1, Lesson 3, I want to talk about mathematical restrictions and solving equations that have just variables in them. And the thing that I want you to remember about solving equations with variables in them is that it's no different than solving equations that have numbers in them. Numbers and letters are just symbols. And that's all they are. They're symbols used to represent ideas. The number, uh, and for instance, if I ask you to show me three, you can't show me three. You can show me three of something. Uh, you can show me three fingers, three shoes, three shirts, three basketballs, three of something, but you can't show me just three uh, because three is an idea. It's a thought. It's a, it's a way that we uh, have ordered things. And so three is the idea um, the number that we use for three is just the symbol. If you looked at a Japanese symbol for three, it wouldn't look anything like ours, but it still represents three. And letters can be used to represent these same ideas. If I said, okay, I'm going to use the letter A, and everywhere I write the letter A, I want you to think three. Well, now I'm using A to represent the exact same idea of three. So letters can be used to represent numbers our ideas of numbers just like numbers can. The only difference is numbers give us nice little packages and we're very used to working with those and so we think they're easier um, and letters seem to become more complicated because we just have this trouble trying to get our arms or our minds around the idea that hey this is just a letter it's just a symbol just like the number three is and anything I can do with numbers I can do with letters as well. So we're gonna follow the same things so remember those um, uh, rules or properties we talked about for solving the equations. We're going to use the same thing with numbers and letters. Okay. Whoops. Um, remember, we're going to follow our same steps. We're going to simplify each side of the equation. We're going to distribute if we can, then add like terms. We're then going to look into remove fractions by multiplying everything by a same denominator. Then we're going to look for removing all of the variables that we're solving for, any term that has that variable to one side, everything else is to the other. And then we're going to go ahead and divide. Lastly, okay, now, just so you know, there's going to be a step right in here before dividing that uh, you're going to have to do because we're working with letters. So uh, there's just one step right in here, and it's called the distributive property which you heard before, but we're going to do it in reverse. Okay, and you go, what is that a guy talking about? Well, let me show you. Distributive, distributive property in reverse. Everyone knows, hopefully, how to distribute. We take this number or letter that's on the outside and we multiply it by both of these on the inside. So this becomes x times a, or a times x, either way, and then I multiply it by this as well, and now I have b times x. That's called the distributive property. Now I want you to notice what happens. This x now, because I distributed it to both, is now in both terms. Both of these terms have an x, because I distributed that x to both of these. Now, what you're going to have to do in this lesson is do that distributed property, but you're going to have to do it in reverse. Here, remember, how did I get from here to here? I multiply the x to both of these. I put the x into here, I put the x into here. So in reverse, what would I do? Well, I'd take the x out, and I'd take it out of both of these. Okay, so I'm going to do out of both yeah, of these, and going to take it out, distributed property in reverse. So because it's common, I can take this x and this x here, I'm going to take the distributed property in reverse. I'm going to put it back on the outside here by itself, and meaning I'm going to take it away from the a, and I'm going to take it away from the b, and now I'm back to where I started. I just did the distributive property in reverse. Okay. Now another way or another term that you can uh, we're going to use. This is called factoring. This is how you factor. Uh, this particular expression. We're going to do a lot of factoring later on this year, but you're going to need to know how to do this very simple factoring here in this first lesson. So let me give you one more example. Let's see if you can do it real quick. Let's say I had CA plus, um, I don't know, FA. Now, what's common to both of these? What's the one letter that they both have? A. So I can do the distributive property in reverse. I can take this A out 
I take this A out, put in the outside, and then I just have the C and the F. That's the distributive property in reverse, because if I actually did the distributive property now, A times C, A C, A times F, F A, I have exactly what I started with here. Okay, so you're gonna have to do that distributive property in reverse when we do it. Okay, now there's one other thing that we're gonna have to look at before we actually do a problem or two, and that is to look at what we call mathematical restrictions. There are certain things that we can't do mathematically. There are certain things that are undefined, is what we call them, or just let's figure them. They're mathematical impossibilities. And one of those is having a denominator of zero. You cannot have a denominator that's zero. 15 divided by 0 is undefined. It's a mathematical impossibility. So this would be something we can never write a fraction that has a 0 in it because that is mathematically undefined. There is another restriction that we'll work with later this year and that is a radical that can't, uh, it's negative, that can't be negative, that has to be positive. You won't run into any of those in this lesson so I'm not going to spend any time talking about it. Now when we're doing these problems we are doing uh, fractions with variables. Now remember, variables can represent any number. So I could put any number I want in for x. However, if I were to choose the number 0 to put in for x, I would have that 15 over 0 that I just said I can't have. It's undefined. So actually there's a restriction here. There's a limit to what you can use for x. You can't use the number 0. Okay? That's called a restriction. You're restricted from using the number zero in this particular problem because if you did, you would create this mathematical impossibility. Now, you're going to be doing this, and here's what I want you to think of. Here's the key point of this whole video, besides the distributed property inverse, and that is this. So write this down and make sure you remember this. The denominator cannot be zero. This is what you're going to use to figure out or to determine the restrictions on every single problem. Anytime you have a fraction anywhere in the problem, you have to say to yourself, that denominator cannot be zero, and then you have to figure out what that is. So here's what you're going to do. You just take this denominator. What's the denominator? X. You take that denominator and you put it in here and you say, that denominator, which is X here, cannot be zero and there you go, you have your restriction. So all you have to do is remember this phrase, the denominator cannot be zero. The denominator cannot be zero. And then all you have to do is take that denominator and put it in there and say it can't be zero. All right, so let's do a problem or two and show you how this works, okay? So here I have the equation ax equals c minus bx. We're going to solve for x, and then we're going to state any restrictions. So I'm going to go through the whole problem, solve it for x first, and then we'll go back and look at restrictions. Now, solving for x means x has to be by itself. So we're going to use the same four steps that we talked about earlier. So the first thing that we do is we look at both sides and see if there's any like terms. There aren't any like terms on this side. There aren't any like terms on this side, so I go ahead to my next step. I want to remove any fractions, if there are any. There aren't any fractions here, so I'm going to go ahead and go to my next step. The next step was to any term that has the variable I'm solving for in it, I have to get them on one side. So this term here has an x, which I'm solving for, and this term here has an x. They're on separate sides, so I need to get them on one side together. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and choose to move this over here because there's nothing else over here. So I'm going to move that bx term to the other side so anything that has an x with it is on one side. Okay, now here's that step in between. Before we divide, I notice that the x's are in common, and this is what's always going to happen because if you're getting all the terms with the same letter on the same side, that x is going to be common, so you're always going to be able to use the distributive property in reverse. Don't divide here. This is where you'll make your mistakes. So don't make it. Most students will get here and they'll go, oh, I need that x by itself. Well, it's times a, so I got to divide by a. So they'll try to divide by a, and then they'll try to divide by b as well, and separately, and then they'll be doing other stuff, and it'll be a big mess. You have to divide, and once you divide, you're done. So if you think you divide and do more, remember I said that's not going to be correct. So here's where we use the distributive property in reverse. X is in both, so I can take the X out of both, leaving me A plus B. Now, 
I have x times this a plus b, so I can go ahead and divide by this a plus b and do it to both sides, and then the a plus b is going to reduce to 1, leaving me x times 1, which is just x, which is why uh, I wanted to set this up this way. Okay, so then I can go ahead and divide. So this is my final answer because now x is by itself. Okay, so I've solved for x. Now I need to state restrictions. Now remember what I said. You have to look at every step. Is there a fraction here? No, so I'm okay. Is there a fraction in this step? No, so I'm okay. Is there a fraction in this step? No, so I'm okay. Is there a fraction in this step? Yes, and what is the restriction? Say it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Say it. What's the restriction? I don't know. Yes, you do. Come on, what is it? What, what's the one thing? Okay, I'm sorry. The denominator cannot be zero. That's always the restriction. So now all I have to do is take my denominator, whatever it is, and put that in the word, in for the word denominator. A plus B cannot be zero. So then I go ahead and I have a plus B cannot be zero and again you can leave it like that or if you solve for one of the other letters that's okay too so I have my answer I solve for X and I have my restriction here okay denominator cannot be zero all right one more here because this involves a fraction I'll do this and then uh, you can go ahead and tackle the rest of the lesson so step by step same thing any like terms that I can add no step two remove fractions how do we remove fraction I multiply by a common denominator I'd like to use a, the least common denominator, but I can use any common denominator. So the only denominator here, a, and this has a denominator 1 and 1, I can multiply this by a. Now, remember, properties of equality. This is the mistake, again, that you're probably going to make, is you're going to reduce this and say, ha-ha, my fraction's gone, ta-da. But you didn't apply the property of equality, because the property of equality says, multiplication property of equality says, if you're going to do this to one term, you have to do it to all of them not just the ones with fractions all of them so while my a does reduce here leaving me just x which is what I want I have to multiply the a by everything else as well so don't forget to do that so that would produce this then I'm solving for x so I gather everything with an x on one side okay that's over here so I need to move this out of the way because I only want x's over here so I go ahead and add the opposite I notice here that I have an a in common with both of these so I can use distributive property in reverse and then I go back and look for fractions in any of my step is there a fraction here yep so I have a restriction what's the restriction denominator cannot be zero so what's my denominator here a right so a cannot be zero so my restriction here would be a cannot be zero then I look at my next step is there a fraction here no so I'm good is there a fraction here no so I'm good is there a fraction here no so I'm good so I only have one restriction a cannot be zero and then I'm solved for x okay um, I'm gonna do one more video where I'm gonna do five or six problems that uh, all involve variables so if you feel like you need more help with those uh, go ahead and check out the next video examples and uh, if you're good with this and go ahead tackle your homework and we'll see you in class oh let's uh, end with a little requiem for a tower